What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna be working on this already sweet 68 Mustang. The customer has already done a bunch of performance upgrades to it. He's got a built 351 Winsler. So we're gonna be changing out that old pesty carburetor with a Holley Sniper unit. So that way he gets the proper fuel delivery and better efficiency. And we're also gonna be changing out the steering system in this for an E-Pass, which is an electric power assist steering system. We're gonna give this a try on this car before we dive back into the EV truck because yes, guys, we know it's obnoxiously loud and we would love to change it out. So we're gonna try it out on this Mustang before we go ahead investing some more money in the EV truck. So this system actually from EPAS Performance, it's very simple. There's no power steering lines and hydraulics you have to run into it. it. Mounts right onto your column. So we do have to pull the column out of the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all that prepped out, pull it out so we can make our, our cuts and get this thing mounted to it. Once you get the column out of the car, you're gonna measure 15 and a half inches from the point where you mount your steering wheel down the shaft, and that's gonna be your first cut. With the steering column out of the Mustang now, we have some area to work with for that electric power steering motor. I'm gonna have to move the fresh air vent that's here so we can push the motor up into this area of the dash and keep it hidden from sight. All right, so next thing to do, we gotta install the bearing plate for the new shaft to go through. Uh, it's got a new plate. We're gonna use the old rubber seal. I'm gonna cut out the center of this to match this bearing plate so it fits in a little bit smoother. Here I have the motor mocked up to our modified column housing and the mount bracket. So now I'm gonna put this up there, mock it up to make sure I have all the room underneath the dash before I final fit everything. Now it is fairly close up here to my clutch. This is the clutch pedal, and this is the motor. So right here is our problem area, and you can still see that small air gap right here. All right, you can see my thumb. I would rather see it a little bit, just a little bit further away. I was able to slide the bracket further down to get the motor drawn up closer to the bracket. So I'm gonna test fit it one more time. Boom, after I made the adjustment here to the depth, I gained that clearance that I needed back here full travel on the clutch pedal now with no interference on the motor. I was able to clock up the motor further up into the dash. It's very minimal for how much is, is hanging down and it's not really intruding in the placement of your feet. Cause that was also a concern, you know, cause this thing sits right here above your feet. Definitely don't want there to be any kind of issue. I mean, I have big clunky boots and I still have plenty of room to tap dance, you know? You know, all the things that may need to happen here. So I'm gonna get this back out and then I can continue on with getting the control side of everything, all the electronics. So let's get moving. I have the control box, very self-contained. Doesn't really take up too much space, not too big, but we do have to find somewhere to mount this thing. Just above the fuse panel right here is a large area that's open on the body. So I'm gonna <laughs> drill some holes, get some rib nuts in there, and uh, use some hardware to just mount it to the body of the car, old fashioned way here. All right, this guy's all mounted up. Luckily the fuse panel's right here, and I was able to tap in to both of those right here from the fuse box, so wiring's done. Now it's time to final assemble the steering column. I had to cut off another inch and a quarter just to get it down to this mating distance. Mustang is back in the air. We needed to get a different universal joint. And then we also have a large bar stock of our D shaft here, All right? Yeah, this is gonna be the spline side that's gonna go in the steering rack. 
and then we'll have our bar stock and this will go into the section that's already coming out of the firewall. So I'm gonna put both of my U-joints in, make a measurement for the bar, cut the bar. Inside, all the electronics are wired up, my 12 volt, my power source to the control box. Once I get it in, we should be ready to go. So now that I have both my couplers on, and now I gotta measure the distance from there to here. That shaft up top from the firewall is collapsible. If I wanted to service the steering rack or something like that, I could just pull the rest of the column away. I have to pull it out a little bit and account for that distance. Nineteen sixty-seven Mustang Coupe, getting the Holley Sniper. Uh, it's got a small block Ford, three hundred and fifty-one Windsor in it. It's got aluminum cylinder heads, camshaft, nice Edelbrock intake. It's good for a little over four hundred horsepower combination. He's been having some issues with fueling, and he wants to try to correct them by going to EFI. What we're going to be doing is installing Holley's Sniper bolt-on EFI unit. As you can see, the engine bay is real clean, real tidy. We're gonna have all the wiring and the hosing not be very intrusive. First order of business was pulling out the old carburetor, which was just a handful of bolts, obviously. Uh, not much vacuum actuation on here, so it was just the four mounting bolts and a fuel line and the throttle linkage. I'm gonna get this mounted up, start the wiring, and then move on to the fuel system. Uh, this little ball end clips onto the throttle. Probably gonna need the uh, large mounting stud for the air cleaner. I just got the unit installed up top onto the intake manifold, so now I'm gonna focus on our fuel system. We've bought a master kit, and it comes with an inline fuel pump. So this car actually already has a sunk tank, which is awesome. I don't have to do too much work here as far as feeding our electric pump here. Got the old pump and filter assembly out of the way. So I'm using 100 micron pre-pump filter. I'm, I'm gonna try to keep this feed line so I don't have to run a second one and I'm only gonna run a full return line. And I'm gonna be using the supplied EFI hose that comes in this master kit here for our return. Alright, she's coming along real nicely. Uh, I've got my pre-filter set up over here. I still got to extend my wiring. That's going to happen a little bit later, all the wiring. But uh, as far as the plumbing goes, my feed into my pre-filter, into our pump. Alright, so all the routing is completed. A little bit of heat shielding is needed right here. We'll get to that towards the end. You can see my return right next to my feed, all the way back. There's my post pump filter all the way back, um, back to where this is and my return. It's coming all the way to the back of the tank and now I gotta get it up into the fill neck so we can dump the fuel back into the tank. Instead of pulling the fuel tank out and then draining everything and cleaning the tank and welding a fitting inside the top or, or even just a bulkhead, I don't wanna go through all that. I don't feel like dropping this tank. I'd rather just <clears throat> feed my return line right into our fill neck. The mount face is right here. Three bolts hold it in. And then <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is whoop, bowl hole right inside here and have all the return fuel go straight into here and go right back into the tank. All right, so to get the fill neck all situated, I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of these Dash 6 steel weld-in bungs off our wall fitting. And then I'm gonna walk over to Tim's bench over here and I'm gonna say, sir, can you please weld my pipe? No. He says no, but he means yes. There we go, AN fitting installed on the fill neck here. And then I'll be able to just go ahead and cut this hose to length, put my clamp and we'll be good to go. So 
So moving on with the wiring I have here, this is the uh, main control harness for the Sniper ECU. This wires your 12 volt reference, it's your battery cable, the relay, and your fuse for the fuel pump. The engine bay is extremely clean, painted everywhere. All the wires are pretty tough. So to keep with that aesthetic and the theme that's going on in here, I have to make a little bit of change to the harness here, uh, just to make it a little bit cleaner and a little bit more usable. We are all tidied up in the back. The fuel delivery system is completed. Wiring is done, loomed up. Looking towards our exhaust, we're gonna be installing no weld O2 sensor right here. Well, time to fire this thing up. On the first start, you're not gonna hear the fuel pump prime because it's not set up yet. So we're gonna go through the setup wizard. This is an eight cylinder engine displacement. We have a 351 Windsor. So we're gonna go 350. Target idle, uh, I usually like to do about 650. A bit slightly bigger cam, so maybe like 850 might do it for now. Uh, mild cam in it, so we're gonna go street strip. Street strip. And some aluminum Edelbrock cylinder heads. Oh, power adders. It does have a nitrous kit on it, but he said he's not gonna hook it up, so I'm just gonna leave it as this for now. I just remember there's no fuel in the tank. Yikes. That's a wrap for this week's episode. If you have any questions on the electric power steering or the Holly Sniper, go ahead and leave those in the comment section below. If you like what we're wearing, by the way, go over our website, man. We do have some new stuff like this hat right here. It's one of my new faves. Go over there, check it out, buy something, support our content, man. We really appreciate it. And don't forget, man, you guys have to hit the notification button. I know you're subscribed, but you don't wanna miss out on anything that's coming up. 
We have some good stuff coming out on the DeLorean. Obviously, we got stuff coming out on the LSX Twin Turbo Chevelle and the EV truck. So again, hit that notification button so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. How, what am I supposed to read your mind? Just, just know what I'm supposed to weld? Does it look like a mind reader? <laughs>